Good evening and welcome to NTD UK News. I'm Stuart Lees and here are today's top stories. The UK government is fighting a social media war against human trafficking, but people smugglers are using the same platforms to promote their criminal activities. The NHS COVID app issued almost 700,000 self-isolation alerts last week, a new record high. And the World Health Organization warns that sleek marketing is attracting young people to e-cigarettes, which can lead to tobacco addiction. Demand for flights from the US to the UK has surged since the government announced plans to scrap quarantine requirements for fully vaccinated American travelers. And today's Neil Woodrow brings us this report. Virgin Atlantic says flight bookings from New York to London have increased threefold by Thursday morning following the government announcement Wednesday evening. Total bookings across all its US to UK routes have more than doubled. Virgin Atlantic's chief commercial officer says it reflects pent-up demand. Despite the inbound flights boost, the United States still advises Americans against travel to the UK. Transport Secretary Grant Shapps on Wednesday said the government was very, very conscious about not importing variants of concern. Uh, but at the same time, um, we recognise double vaccinations uh, where they're approved by either the European Medicines Agency or by the uh, federal agency in the States. Uh, and so now is a good time to, 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 to open up. From 4 a.m. on Monday, fully vaccinated travellers from the US, the EU and a handful of other European countries will no longer need to self-isolate for 10 days when entering Britain. France is excluded from the quarantine relaxation, as it has been dubbed a higher risk. It's due to the beta variant in the Réunion part of France. Réunion is a French island 6,000 miles away in the Indian Ocean, east of Madagascar. Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab told the BBC Radio 4 Today programme, it's not the distance that matters, it's the ease of travel between different component parts of any individual country. Neil Woodrow, NDD News. The government has been fighting an information war against human trafficking on social media, such as Facebook and Instagram. But people smugglers are using the same platforms to promote their criminal activities. And today's Eddie Aiken brings us the story. As more and more migrants try to cross the English Channel to reach Britain, the Home Office is trying to stem the flow not just by intercepting boats at sea, but also by sending out social media messages to dissuade would-be migrants from embarking on perilous journeys. The PN News Agency found out through a Freedom of Information request that between December and April, the Home Office spent more than £23,000 on social media ads targeted at migrants living in France. The ads on Facebook and Instagram featured slogans such as There is no hiding place. Don't put your or your child's life in danger, and we will return you, translated into Kurdish, Arabic, Persian, and Pashto. But social media have long been used by human traffickers to promote their criminal business. A Daily Mail investigation found popular platforms are awash with adverts from human traffickers and even tutorials to help illegal migrants reach the UK. An Albanian criminal group has been promoting its services on TikTok and other social media sites charging up to £20,000 to smuggle migrants into Britain. Last month, Home Secretary Priti Patel wrote to social media companies asking them to urgently remove posts that glamorise migrant crossings. She said such posts were totally unacceptable. More than 9,000 people have crossed the channel this year on small boats. In July, more than 3,300 have arrived in the UK, a record for a single month. France has promised to step up its efforts to prevent migrants from crossing the channel. Under an agreement reached this week, the UK will pay £55 million to France to help secure its borders. The French government says it will equip police with drones, thermal cameras and night vision goggles. Eddie Aiken, NTD News. The number of COVID app users told to isolate hit a record high last week with almost 700,000 alerts sent out in England and Wales. The latest NHS figures are an 11% rise on the previous high of 620,000 a week earlier. 
This week, the government said it's expanding its daily contact testing for frontline sectors who are exempt from isolation. Many families have unexpectedly found COVID-19 recorded as a cause of death for their loved ones. Amid worries that the number of deaths from COVID could be exaggerated, an independent panel is conducting an audit of all COVID-19 deaths in the UK. Entities Jane Worrell speaks to pathologist Dr. Claire Craig, who's overseeing the audit. Have COVID-19 deaths been overdiagnosed in the UK? An independent panel of experts is examining every official COVID death in the UK to get to the bottom of this question. We caught up with pathologist Claire Craig, who's overseeing the task. So the diagnosis of death is an art. Um, it requires a doctor to look at the balance of probabilities with the information that they have at the time. And when you've got potentially a false positive result in, as part of the patient's record, that plays into how they diagnose a death. Because we were collecting data every single day, the data collection meant that the deaths were just a fact, were, were recorded just because they happened after a test without actually talking to the doctors that were caring for that patient to get a more thorough understanding of what had happened. Many people have been surprised to find their loved ones had COVID-19 recorded as their cause of death. We had anecdotal stories of people who were very concerned about how their relatives' deaths were diagnosed. But we didn't really, couldn't get a real handle on the problem. And, you know, anecdotes have some meaning, but they, they, they can't quantify it. And so what we wanted to attempt to do was quantify the size of that problem in a fair and rational way, because people couldn't understand how big a problem it was. Speaking at a recent lockdown summit in London that brought together distinguished experts to critically examine the impact of lockdowns, Dr Craig said there's evidence that patients dying from other ailments were counted as COVID deaths. Data shows a lack of deaths from some other causes when COVID deaths went up. She says asymptomatic positive tests recorded as cases could cause a problem. In addition, there are issues with the accuracy and sensitivity of PCR tests. Dr Craig and the team will first start the audit by looking at the official deaths in selected regions of the UK. When do you think all of this data will be available for people to see? Um, we don't have a deadline on this and it could be, you know, it's a process, it'll take time, we'll start small and we will get there in the end. Um, and, you know, if people want to help, please get in touch. She says so far around 70 people are involved in the task. Jane Werrell, NTD News, London. Tobacco companies are trying to attract children to e-cigarettes with appealing flavours and sleek marketing so that they become the next generation of smokers. That's according to a report by the World Health Organization. NTD's Anna Rodriguez has the details. The World Health Organization, or WHO, warns the tobacco industry's marketing is attracting youngsters to e-cigarettes and can lead to tobacco addiction. A WHO report calls for greater regulation of smoke-free devices containing nicotine. Let us be clear. If you have been part of the problem, or actually a big part of the problem, uh, of killing 8 million people, we have seen many tactics in the past, like light cigarettes, filter cigarettes, menthol cigarettes, that also claim to be the healthier alternative. In an interview with The Mail on Sunday, a tobacco group CEO says he wants his company to be able to leave smoking behind. Kretsch says while the evidence in a recent published WHO report is not conclusive, e-cigarettes are known to be harmful. So therefore I don't believe uh, this time that um, um, all of a sudden you, you, you turn from being the real problem to being part of the solution. I don't, I don't buy that. Kretsch says there are about 16,000 flavors of e-cigarettes, including ones that are appealing to children, such as bubblegum, vanilla ice cream and chocolate cookies. And we know that um, you are much more likely then to use cigarettes in the end. At least twice, if not three, three times more, the risk is there that you will then become a, a, a cigarette smoker. That calls for 
exactly the same regulation as cigarettes you have. Companies. Kelly Hennings of Bloomberg Philanthropies, which founded the WHO report, says tobacco firms promote e-cigarettes through sleek product design, social media influencers, and flavors. We know e-cigarettes are extremely appealing to children, and the industry's goal is to get a whole new generation of users addicted to these products. This week, British American Tobacco published its sales figures. The company saw soaring demand for vaping, e-cigarette, and oral nicotine products, and they now make almost 12 percent of total operations. Anna Rodriguez, NTD News. America's second most senior military commander says British soldiers will be given access to classified U.S. military data to facilitate cooperation among allies in future conflicts. Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff General John Hyten says the Pentagon has an overclassification problem. This has prevented the U.S. military from taking full advantage of its allies' capabilities. British service personnel and other allied soldiers will be able to use their biometric data to log in to the Pentagon's combat cloud system. The Pentagon has been seeking to change its fighting strategy following a war game last year in which the U.S. military was defeated in a hypothetical battle with China over Taiwan. A revived musical comedy opens in London, hoping to bring laughter back to audiences and help them find relief from the pandemic. And today's Cost Terminus has the story. Cast members from revived musical comedy Anything Goes hope to bring some relief to audiences after the COVID-19 pandemic. Set on a cruise ship traveling from New York to London, the musical debuted in 1934, during the Great Depression. In this revived version, Tony Award winners Sutton Foster and Robert Lindsay have starring roles. They're all escaping from a depression in America, so they're all coming to the land of hope and glory. <laughs> and, you know, so what a perfect show to, to be escaping from a depression. Hmm. I mean, it's a tonic for what we've all been through for the last year and a half. London's theatres have been hit hard by the pandemic. They were allowed to reopen without restrictions on audience numbers only 10 days ago. Anything Goes is one of the first major shows to open in London since restrictions eased. I was concerned. Um, I'm not as concerned now because theatre is coming back um, and audiences are showing up. But I was, I was concerned and scared because it was gone <laughs> completely. The show, with plenty of laugh-out-loud moments, also features Gary Wilmot and Felicity Kendall. Audiences have been amazing. They've been that horse let out in the field. They're absolutely loving it. And they're sitting there, and even though they've got masks on, you can still hear the laughter and the cheering, even before the curtain's gone up. Though restrictions have eased, challenges remain. Last week, composer Andrew Lloyd Webber shut Cinderella after a cast member tested positive and others had to self-isolate. But there's just, just hanging over us is this constant fear that we're going to be shut down at any moment. And then that's 10 days where you can't perform and those theatres are dark again. It's a pretty scary prospect. Anything Goes will run at the Barbican Theatre for 12 weeks until mid-October. Costa Menes, NTD News. Still to come, Hollywood actor George Clooney comments on recent landslides at Lake Como as a property owner in the region. That and more after the break. Thank you for watching our daily news show on YouTube. You can also watch our other programming on Channel 190 on Sky TV or on Freeview via Channel Box on Channel 271. In the meantime, though, please give this video a like and hit subscribe to our channel. Have a good day.